Sit tonight as we bring the talk about Romans, bring the message because my feet are killing me. I don't work for a living, okay? Um, I I definitely don't stand on my feet all day long. So um, I appreciate uh, your grace on that. And uh, let's go to Romans chapter nine. All right, Romans chapter nine, and uh, we're going to start in verse fourteen, okay? Romans chapter 9, the Bible says, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose, Oh, my power in thee, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, he had a fore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he said, he has me. Joshua, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which were not, which was not my beloved. And it came to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as I said before, and as I said before, except the Lord of Sabbath, Sabbath hath left us a seed. We have been in What shall we say then? The Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even righteousness which is of faith. The Israel which follow after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Therefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the work of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Lord, when you're a child of God. God, that we would look to that, Lord. And Lord, I God, help us to see grace, Lord, and show grace, Lord. Help us to, uh, Lord, just look from your word. I will ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, we finished up in verse 14. It's been a couple weeks ago, but we finished up in verse 14. We, we uh, talked about the fact that it's unrighteousness with God. And of course, the answer is, of course, not. Follow after the new man. When we start following, uh, uh, we walk new. And that's a great thing, but then our old man learn how to use into the Gentiles here of the church. Those that uh, were steep in traditionalism and, and, and doing the old Judaism. 
They were there, there were those there that were saved, born again, yes. And then Christ accepted him and, and amazed at his amazing grace and, and but the thing does I do. And so there's a two different remember that mentalities. Have compassion, who have compassion. So then, not that we have the wrath of God that is made. Understand that we pick to be able to. I think this is important. I think this is All right, that makes a huge difference. I guess I'm so loud, I just hear me echoing in here. It sounds like the microphone's on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so, wow, that's really loud. Um, um, we are supposed to have mercy. We're supposed to show the love of Christ, and that means be merciful. That means, mercy means to, to give forgiveness when we don't want to. It means to give grace when we don't want to. And so, um, we, we like to say, you know, well, we hate the sinner, or we hate the sin, but love the sinner. And that's fine, but do we actually do that? Because, see, what happens is, when we hate the sinner because of the sin, we look on others as if they are different from us. We call that judgment, right? The wrong kind of judgment. Because we are supposed to discern right from wrong. We're supposed to discern if this is someone that can speak into my life or not. But we are not supposed to uh, uh, con condemn, put condemnation on someone. All right. Well, I mean, kids got to learn how to sit in church, don't they? How many of you sat through church when you were a kid? Yeah, you all had to learn, right? How many of you got corrected from not doing what you were supposed to do while sitting in church? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, so <clears throat> when we hate someone, when we don't show mercy, when we don't give grace to someone because of the sin in their life, because of something they have done, then we look at them as being different than us. We, we well, I don't do that. Well, if you're looking at someone and you don't consider them to be as valuable as you are, then you're making you and us and them a them. And that's what I really want to talk about here for a minute is this whole us versus them. Um, this us versus them mentality is of the devil and needs to be eradicated from our mindset, from our heart, from our families, from church, from society. I want to quit seeing others for who I perceive that they are and just see them as God does in absolute need of Jesus Christ. Not just those that I would classify as lost, okay? Uh, obviously, the lost need Jesus, but guess what? <laughs> I still need Jesus, okay? You still need Jesus. The world still needs Jesus. We need him more today than we've ever needed him before. And so, uh, not just those that we classify as lost, but those who have claimed the blood of Christ, they, they, they need to be looked at uh, the right way as God does too. We forget, I forget, that you are image bearers of Christ. And do you understand that you do not have to be a born-again Christian to be an image bearer of Christ because Adam and Eve were made in the likeness and, and image of who? Of God. So we are all image bearers of Christ. All are, are that. And so we need to get rid of this us versus them mentality. My problem is that I always think that where I'm standing somehow places me on better ground than someone else, and so I become us while looking at them. I start thinking, this is what happens when I start doing really good and I start following Christ and I start doing all those things, and my flesh starts to masquerade as Christianity, and I start to perform these things, and I start to think, well, I'm doing pretty good, I've arrived, and so I look down at anyone that does not do it like I do it, or as well as I do it, or as often as I do it, or whatever you might say, the lost are not my enemy. Uh, you know, and it's real easy to look at the wickedness of the world and, 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 and uh, we can sometimes get judgmental. But you know what else I've had to be very careful of is as the Lord has 
tried to teach me grace and mercy and the things in my life and showing those things to others. I've noticed that I don't have near a problem with those that are steeped in sin as I do those that don't think they are. I, we would call them the legalistic crowd, the ones who are dotting every I and crossing every T of Christianity, the ones who are performing wonderfully before men, but their heart, the Bible calls them a, a rotted sepulcher or a dirty sepulcher. Uh, they, they whitewash tombs on the inside, but uh, black as death on the, on the are, are white tomb, whitewashed tombs on the outside, but black as death on the inside. So the, leg, the lost are not my enemy. The legalistic are not my enemy. I remember talking to a young man one time. He was having a hard time with somebody um, at his school because they were being very judgmental towards him. And, and, and they were being uh, very uh, pointed about some things. And so he started to get angry with them and wanted to be very upset and, and, and go off. And I said, but wait a second. Don't you realize that now you're just judging them? You're just judging them from a different side of the coin. We have to be very careful because the lost aren't our enemy. The legalistic are not my enemy. My enemy's name, are you listening? My enemy's name is Larry Hoff. That's, he's my greatest enemy. Your enemy's name is put your name here, okay? And I am not in battle against them, but I'm in battle against myself. It is my flesh that is the enemy of God. It is my flesh that causes me to cling to blindness when God wants to help me see. It is my flesh that chooses chains of bondage or addiction when Christ wants to make me free. Paul did not say in Romans chapter 7, O wretched man that they are, who will deliver me from their ways of death? That's not what he said, is it? He said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He knew who this enemy was, and he also knew who would deliver him because he said, I thank God through Christ Jesus my Lord. We need Jesus. If I would just focus on Christ and how he and I are, my relationship with him, my walk with him, my intimacy with him, if that would be the most important thing in my life, then I won't see me as us or them. I will just see him. See, our problem with the whole us versus them mentality is we're looking at the wrong thing. We're not looking at Christ. We're not looking to God. I will see when I, when, I, when I look at him, when I'm trying to focus on our relationship, I will just see him. I will see him when I look in the mirror of God's word. Do you, how often do you read your Bible and you don't see Jesus? How long has it been since you've read your Bible and seen Jesus? And if it's today, praise God. If it was yesterday, praise God. Okay, but has it been a couple weeks, a couple months, a few years? How long has it been since you've seen Christ in the word? I will see him when I mortify the deeds of this flesh and follow the Spirit. I will see him when I see someone overtaken in sin and needing delivered by him. That's what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, go to him. Considering thyself, lest also be tempted and restore him. I can't do that if my relationship with Christ is not right. I won't see him as someone in need of Christ, I'll see him as a them, as someone who isn't doing it as good as I am. I will see Christ when I see someone who has never met him, when I'm focused on Christ. Hebrews chapter 12 says this in verse 1, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Everything about my walk with him starts with him and ends with him. So why would I intermeddle with anything else? Why would I do anything else but keep him at the center of it all? My day, my week, my month, my life must start with him, follow him, focus on him, and finish with him. Okay, Brentley, this isn't joke time, buddy. Come on. All right. So, verse 17 says this. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, will he hardeneth. So there can be no us, there can be no them, there is only me and him. I can choose to rest in his mercy, I can trust his mercy, and show his mercy to all that are not me, or I can reject it and become hard-hearted. And God knows the choice that I make and why. See, God will have mercy on whom he wants and God will harden the hearts of those that he wants. 
remember Pharaoh, and Paul brings up Pharaoh. God told Pharaoh he was raised up for this purpose. Now, that doesn't mean, the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, okay? But let's, let, let's look at this, because there are those who would say, well, see, that takes away Pharaoh's free will. No, God's actions caused Pharaoh to harden his heart. God placed Pharaoh where he was at because God knew exactly how Pharaoh was going to react to everything that God was going to do. God knows how we're going to react. God has foreknowledge, well, the only one that has foreknowledge. God sees everything. There is no time with him. And so he knows what we're going to do. That doesn't take away our free will. All right, and so there are those that are simply there to make things hard. Do you understand that? Have you got somebody like that in your life? Somebody who's there just to make things difficult. Well, God puts those people there. Verse 19 says this, Thou wilt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? So some will think, Why does God blame people for not responding? Haven't they simply done what he makes them do? And God doesn't blame people uh, for what they do. God blames people for what they do with Jesus. In other words, uh, people would say this, uh, what Paul's saying, if I reject his mercy, doesn't that mean I'm doing his will? Well, that's foolish thinking, okay? That's foolish thinking. Verse 20 says this, Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto his glory, unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. God can use whomever he wants for whatever he wants. God does use whoever he wants, for whatever he wants. And it's not that God is making people do things. God is just putting people where they're going to be to do what they're going to do. Because, again, he has that foreknowledge. As much as I may not, may not like it, God places people in my life who may never have any intention of walking with Jesus. You ever thought about that? God puts people in your life who are never, ever going to choose Jesus. Nor will they try and help me to choose Jesus. As a matter of fact, they might be just the opposite of that. No, he puts them there as a vessel of dishonor to help me rely on him. Who is patient with vessels of wrath. He is patient with them. How do I know? Well, he's been patient with me, and I've been a vessel of wrath. There have been times in, uh, that I have been that vessel of wrath in someone's life. Was I doing God's will? No. No. <laughs> I was just, I was just re 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 replying to God the way he knew I was going to reply, responding the way he knew I would respond. So he is patient with vessels of wrath, knowing that they will never turn to him but using them to give me opportunity to be like Jesus by allowing the Holy Spirit to help me show patience and compassion on, who, on people who will never understand it. That's, that's a hard thing to think about, isn't it? But see, if I have an us versus them mentality, then I'm never going to look at them as someone who needs Christ, even if they're never going to. Uh, listen, there have been those in my life that I've said, there's no way that person is ever going to be saved. Okay? Matter of fact, there was one okay, who I went to, uh, uh, well, ever so often, and I know that many, many went to him for years and years, and I honestly, even though I prayed for Envy Dice to get saved, I didn't think he was ever going to get saved. I didn't. And for years, Miss Donna, would you say he was a vessel of dishonor in your life? Yeah. But, but see, it was through that that Donna learned to rely on Christ, Mark, Martha, they learned to rely on Christ. It was through that we, we had to keep praying for him. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And you never know when God is going to do something. You never know when, when someone is going to quit rejecting God, but God does. And so if we don't show that mercy, what if, what if uh, 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 Brother Barnes and Brother Groves didn't go speak to Avi every chance they got? 
What if my father-in-law, my father-in-law was not a very well-known witness, but one person he always witnessed to was Envy Dykes, okay? And so what if these people didn't do that? What if that, well, he's not going to, I mean, he's not going to receive Christ, so why try? Well, we're supposed to show others Christ. We're supposed to show mercy unto vessels of dishonor. Always. And so if we look at someone as a them because they're not us, then we're not going to show the mercy that God wants us to show. God's not going to get the glory. But when I allow them to use, to, to, for God to use them to help me rely on him, to be like Jesus, uh, allow the Holy Spirit to help me show patience and compassion on people who just don't get it, God does this to get the glory in my life. And he does this to get the glory uh, for what he does. <clears throat> there have been times in my life while rejecting his mercy and grace that I have been a vessel of dishonor um, and destruction to those lives he placed me into. And before you start thinking you're a vessel of honor and all others who do not act or believe as you do are the opposite, remember, there's no us and them. You have been both. We all have. We've all been in us. We've all been in them. So verse 25 says this, and we'll read uh, verse 25, 29. And as he saith also in Osi, uh, I will call them my people which are not my people, and her beloved which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass that in that place where it is said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, through, uh, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And you know, here we are thousands of years later, and we don't consider it a short work, but uh, a day is as a thousand years to the Lord. Is that what it is? Yeah. And so God's not in a hurry, and God's doing exactly what God is going to do. Verse 29 says, and Isaiah, and, and Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath hath, had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and had been made like a Nicomora. Um, what, what, what Isaiah was saying and what Paul was alluding to is the fact that the children of Israel were often vessels of wrath, vessels of dishonor, and yet God still chose them. And if it wasn't for the fact that he would send a deliverance to them periodically, then they would have had the same outcome as Sodom and Gomorrah. Paul does what all preachers who wish to let God's word be the authority, and he brought up scripture to show why he stands where he stands in faith. The Gentiles, and that's all that are not Jewish, will be called uh, as well as the nation of Israel. He says they're going to be called. The nation of Israel is not special because of who they are, but because of who their God is, who chose them. This is the same for all. We are not special because of who we are, but because of who our God is. I'm not special because I'm saved. I'm not special because uh, I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm not special for anything, but I've got a special God who wants to walk with me and talk with me and work in my life. And he's been long-suffering to me. And he's been long-suffering uh, 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 to so many, and yet sometimes we'll just continue to be that vessel of dishonor because we'll reply to God with anything, yes, with anything else but yes, Lord. And do you understand, when we are not saying, yes, Lord, speak, Lord, your servant heareth, here am I, send me, when we're not responding in those ways, we are a vessel of dishonor. And we are in someone's life hindering them from walking with God, or we're in someone's life, God is using us to be that friction that causes them to rely on God. That doesn't mean that we should stay there. Well, I'm just doing what God wants me to do because he wants me to reject him. Well, that's just foolish. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All right, we'll finish up. Uh, verse 30 says this, What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. So there's this, uh, uh, well, as I'll finish. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. I want to, I want to, I, I don't know what influences you have. Uh, each, each and every one is going to have different influences. But there is a, I don't know, I guess a, a sect 
or a branch, whatever you want to say, of independent fundamental Baptists. And really, they call themselves new independent fundamental Baptists. You have to be very careful because they, King James only, and they, you know, they, 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 they toe the line on so many things. But then they get to the point where they believe in uh, replacement theology. Does anybody know what that is? Anybody know what that replacement theology is? Okay, well, good. Uh, well, maybe you do know what it is. You just don't know what it's called that. But um, there are those that firmly believe that the Gentiles, or and especially America, um, has replaced the nation of Israel as God's chosen people. That the church has replaced the nation of Israel as God's chosen people. Now, the problem with that theology is it is a heresy. It is not biblical. And what Paul is telling us right now, which is one of the passages that they would use because they take it out of context, but what Paul is saying is the nation of Israel is no less the child of God because they rejected him. They just rejected him, okay? There's still a remnant that's going to be saved. There's still those that are going to be saved. But, and, and the church does not replace the nation of Israel. The church is not. Now, now, now understand this. This is where, and I, I don't even know why I'm getting into this, but um, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 3, God had had it up to here with his, uh, his chosen people, Israel, and he said, I write you a bill of divorcement because of your uh, 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 adultery, your fornication. And they were spiritually uh, stepping out on God. And so God divorced them. And now he's remarrying the church. Okay, But that does not mean that we replaced them, that the Jews are not allowed to, to have the grace of God. Because if you believe that, then what in the world are you going to do with Revelations when the 144,000, which are the nation of Israel, uh, uh, turn to Christ as their Messiah and do the greatest evangelistic work that the earth has ever seen? Okay, And so, which there is another branch that believes that they're the, the witnesses, but anyways. Um, so, you need to be very careful about uh, that type of thinking. There is no replacement theology. We are... Uh, God's children, but anyone who calls on Jesus Christ, whether Jew or Gentile, is God's child. And anyone who is born again and baptized is the bride of Christ. And so um, we don't replace anything. Israel is still God's chosen people. And, and any, any of them that will turn to him are redeemed. Amen? Amen. All right, because they believe, there are those who believe that they are uh, reprobate. They cannot be saved. And I just don't find that in my Bible. So, all right, let's stand.